Hey class, this is our video lecture for chapter number six, part one, where we're going to be calculating deductions and losses and seeing what limitations there are in trying to claim them. If you remember in past chapters, we were talking about income. And the general rule is that all income is going to be taxable unless specifically excluded or treated tax-free. So the mirror image is that deductions, I'll call them expenses, are not deductible unless specifically allowed by the law. So maybe it's the worst of both worlds. Here it says everything is taxable income. And here it says everything is not deductible unless it's specifically excluded, that's the income, or allowed as a deduction. Here you can see deductions can be classified maybe into three broad categories. This first one here, which is probably the best of the three, for at least for tax purposes, is called trade or business expenses. Okay, under this section, and it's a real broad topic. Generally, any type of cost that's used up for a trade or business is going to be a deduction. The second group here under a different Internal Revenue Code is called um, deductions for the production of income. And this only applies to people, individuals like you and me, this could also apply to individuals, yeah, but also corporations. So this one doesn't apply to corporations. The main category here would be for rental operations, rental property, being a landlord and the costs you incur in running your rental units, your rental operations, will be deducted here under this section. And then there's other sections in the Internal Revenue Code allowing other specific deductions like itemized deductions that we'll see in this chapter but more so in a future chapter and then maybe we talked about one called alimony maybe from the person receiving it as income in a previous chapter but now if you're paying it you get to deduct it and that's allowed specifically under an internal revenue code section as a so-called for AGI deduction so here is AGI. So if you remember in our first project, we had to prepare a 1040 form. And at the bottom of that first page was the AGI, the Adjusted Gross Income Number. And to get to this number, you were maybe able to subtract out some expenses. These expenses here are called four AGI deductions to get to the AGI number. And then on the back side of the 1040 form, again, we recopy the AGI at the top, and then we subtract out some more deductions, like we had learned back in Chapter 2, I believe, for exemptions and the standard deduction. Here in this chapter, we're going to learn some itemized, but again, we'll save most of the itemized topics for a future chapter. But these, because they're subtracted from the AGI number to eventually get the taxable income that we look up on the tax table or use the tax rate schedule, these deductions are called from AGI deductions. And of the two, four from, the four are better because you get to reduce AGI, the AGI number. These don't reduce AGI here, the from deductions, they reduce taxable income, just like this up here reduces taxable income. But reducing AGI is important because it may affect the amount of income, maybe further up on the tax return that you have to report. Or maybe it will affect the deductions down here, specifically some of the itemized ones we'll discuss today in this video lecture. Yeah? And it always is best that the AGI number will be smaller resulting in less income maybe up here being reported, maybe increasing the amount of itemized deductions we can claim and deduct. The so-called four type, here's some samples of four type of deductions. Um, that trade or business type again, under section 162, I believe it was 162, 
or here is uh, an unusual one that may not even show up on a tax return. Let's say that you get a reimbursement, money back from your employer. You're being paid to the employee. And the employee had paid out uh, business expenses. So here is the expense. So basically, they cancel out each other. And, it, it's, and the effect is like it's a deduction for AGI. And here is the income again, and here is deduction, canceling out each other. So AGI is uh, not reflecting that income and not reflecting that deduction. Most business expenses claimed by employees, let's say that are unreimbursed, would be claimed as an itemized deduction. So it would have no effect on AGI. Here it reduced the AGI if this was included as income. But most times you don't even report both because they cancel out each other. Loss of a sale of business property. So the typical example here would be selling your delivery truck, selling an office building. And if you incur a loss, we'll see probably in a future chapter, that's called a Section 1231 loss. And you can claim that as an ordinary deduction for AGI. If you have a rental operations, again, that's a Section 12, uh, 212 production of uh, income activity. And the expenses you incur for that rental property are for AGI deductions. Um, there's no uh, flow here. It's just uh, a list. Yeah, so don't, you don't really have to follow these lines here. Moving expenses, we'll probably see this in the itemized deduction chapter is a 4 AGI. Again, we've talked about alimony. Whoever receives it has to report income, and whoever has to pay it gets to claim a 4 AGI deduction. If you deposit money with a bank or financial institution and you purchase a certificate of deposit, you have to leave the money with that bank for a certain period of time. But if you take out the money, the bank, not the government, may charge you a penalty. Well, that penalty the bank charges can be claimed as a deduction. And it probably will show up on the 1099 INT form that reports interest income, but now should also report the penalty, early withdrawal penalty that you can claim as a 4 AGI deduction. Retirement plans like uh, a Keo plan, an IRA, a traditional IRA, maybe a 401k. If you contribute that money into these plans, possibly you can reduce your taxable income, either uh, claiming a deduction or reporting less income. And the effect is a 4 AGI deduction. Medical savings account. Um, not too common here in Hawaii. Uh, maybe uh, some may have, people have, may have a health savings account. And if you contribute into this account, the employee contributing, it possibly can be claimed as a 4 AGI deduction. Maybe this is something you have or going to have to pay if you have student loans. Interest typically would be an itemized deduction. But student loan interest can possibly be claimed. Uh, up to a certain dollar limit based on also income limits as a 4 AGI deduction. A person that has a trade or business, either as a sole proprietorship or through a partnership or maybe even a limited liability company, their profits are subject to income tax and also something called self-employment tax. The Social Security tax is charged to the self-employed uh, business. Well, because their self-employment tax is so big, the government allows a deduction, a 4 AGI deduction of half of that tax. Let's take a look at, well, before we take a look at the 1040 form, here it says the 4 AGI deductions can either be reported directly on the page 1 of the 1040, or first reported on schedules with the related income. And then the profit on those schedules are then rewritten on the 1040 form. So examples of uh, deductions reported right on the 1040 form 
would be these adjustments right here. So if I zoom in, here you can see uh, some of the things we already mentioned, that health or medical savings account, moving expenses. Here is, um, let's see, half, half of that self-employment tax we talked about. What else do we have? Retirement contribution here. Here's that penalty for the early withdrawal from the certificate of deposit, alimony. So all of these are specific amounts reported as a deduction that's subtotaled right here on page one of the 1040. Or if you go back and take a look at the income items, the profit of certain activities, like this business income coming from Schedule C, on that Schedule C would be business income and minusing out the business deductions. Same thing would be true for farm income. Farm income minus farm deductions and the net profit for the farm would be reported here, all coming from Schedule F. Or that production of income rental property I had mentioned here on a Schedule E would be reported the rental income minusing the rental deductions to get the net rental profit or loss reported here. So the numbers you see here, they have already reported uh, four AGI deductions. And here's AGI right here. All the deductions reported up here or reflected up here are the four type. And then what we do is we, we copy that, um, copy this AGI to the top of the back page, page two, and rewrite it right here. Then we subtract out some more deductions. So let's zoom in here again to see what these deductions are. So again, we already talked about the standard deduction and exemption deductions back in chapter two. And now we're talking about here in this chapter six, itemized deductions. And again, uh, we'll focus on itemized more so in a future chapter, but it's either itemized or the standard, and you can see off in the margin here, the typical standard deduction amounts. So if your itemized deductions are larger than this, you want to summarize your itemized deductions on a Schedule A and total them up, and write that total itemized over here as a from, subtracted from the AGI number. Again, the for type is better than the from type. It's always good to reduce AGI because it always, if anything, will have a better effect on all, all the other numbers on your tax return to reduce your overall taxes for the year. So um, well, let me go back to that um, 1040 form. So here is that Schedule C and the net profit for the business in line 12. And here is the Schedule C. You report your income up here, minusing out costs of goods sold, and minusing out all the operating expenses to get a net profit over here. And this is what you put back on the 1040 form line 12. So all of these deductions here are four AGI deductions, keeping in mind that this profit here is not only subject to income tax, but subject to that self-employment uh, tax, the Social Security tax for the sole proprietor. So when you claim a deduction here, you really are reducing two or maybe even three different taxes, the federal income tax, the self-employment tax, and, and also your state here, our Hawaii income taxes. There are limitations to claiming the um, itemized deductions. So um, we'll, we'll see that on the next screen. But in the case of medical expenses, you would total up your medical expenses for the year and then reduce them by 10% of the taxpayer's adjusted gross income. So you remember, we wanted this number smaller. And one of the reasons is to reduce this threshold to claim more medical expenses. So what you get to deduct as an itemized deduction is so-called from AGI deduction. It's only the excess 
of this over 10% of your um, of your adjusted gross income. So if this 10% is bigger than this, you end up with no medical deduction. In the case of casualty losses, and we'll go through a more complex calculation in a future chapter, we would reduce the casualty loss by 10% also of the adjusted gross income, reducing that deduction possibly to zero. Another group of deductions claimed on Schedule A itemized deductions are these so-called miscellaneous ones that are reported at the bottom of the Schedule A. And we would take a subtotal of these items and then reduce them by 2% of the taxpayer's adjusted gross income. And then the remainder is what's deductible. Again, for a lot of people, this is zero. So some people will say, oh, I pay union dues. I pay uh, for working tools. Well, that's this over here. And is it more than 2% of your income? If not, probably nothing of that is deductible. Oh, here's what I charge you. You have to do your tax return. I'm going to say, hey, it's tax deductible. But in reality, if, if this is not really big, and if this is uh, not really small, only then can you get a, probably a number here, yeah? Otherwise, for most people, it's going to be zero. Same thing with medical. Most medical expenses are covered by health insurance. Your uh, Kaiser, your HMSA, Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, uh, TRICARE reducing these out-of-pocket expenses. And that's what you get to claim here, reduced by 10% of your AG, AGI, probably resulting in zero. Oh, I got into a car accident. Oh, my house burned down. Well, you got to reduce the loss by the insurance you got. You got to reduce the loss, we'll see, by $100 um, floor, and then this 10%. Most times, it's going to be zero. There are other four AGI itemized deductions with limitations. Here it says charity. But charity limitations are only for, let's say, the amount you can claim in any one year. And if you have any excess you couldn't claim, you can carry it over to the next year. Here you got to, uh, the amount you can claim most usually is going to be 50% um, of your AGI. And again, if you have extra, you just carry it over to next year subject to this limitation. And again, we'll see in a future chapter, There's it's a little bit more complex than this 50% um, AGI limit. Here, this last one here, if the total uh, income, AGI income, exceeds a certain limit, the, the total itemized deductions will start to decrease. Again, if the AGI gets relatively large, the itemized deductions will start to shrink. Here is our itemized deduction schedule, Schedule A. And you can see the different groups of uh, itemized deductions, including this theft and casualty loss reported first on this form. And on that form, it says, oh, reduce the total loss by 10% of your AGI. Again, probably resulting in zero over here on your Schedule A. Well, here's your total medical. Here's your AGI number. You take 10% of that over here and subtract it out, probably resulting in zero. Here's all that miscellaneous deductions, including the tax prep fee that you shouldn't be paying anymore because now you should be able to prepare your own return. Or maybe just the cost of buying that uh, tax software to prepare your own return over here. But you know what? Because you got to put your AGI over here and take 2% of it and subtract it out. Here's how much you get to deduct of that software. Okay, so you add up all of this and total itemized deductions that you claim back on the 1040 form if it's bigger than the taxpayer's standard deduction. If you read the fine print down here, let's see if I can zoom in. If your AGI that's this line 38 back on the 1040 form, exceeds this dollar amount. This is for probably unmarried taxpayers. If, this, if your AGI exceeds this, this number here will probably go down 
or certain categories up here of expenses will probably be decreased. The dollar limit, the dollar threshold for married filing joint probably is higher than this amount. But it tells you to probably go check out the instructions. Yeah, that's what this checkbox I believe is over here. Okay, so the, what the, one of the categories we mentioned before is trade or business deductions versus something called investment expenses. To be able to be claimed as a trade or business expenses, it has to be ordinary, has to be necessary. I kind of disagree with the definition here of the word necessary if you look it up in the dictionary. Tax definition is, is, is different and has to be reasonable has to be uh, recorded, documented. So in case you're audited, you can prove you incurred all of these expenses and not just pulled the number out of the air. And it has to be incurred by our taxpayer. So our textbook goes through a discussion of ordinary, necessary, and reasonable, and, and documentation. For this one here, let me give you an example. So let's say you have a mortgage, you own a home, you pay your a mortgage interest in real property tax but let's say I'm so generous uh, I'll, I'll pay it for you okay just give me the bill I'll mail it in well you didn't pay it you can't deduct it so in that case probably what probably what you want is me to gift you the money so now you can pay it right you're the owner you're liable on the mortgage well let's say that um, uh, you pay, you pay my mortgage. Can you deduct it? I'm on the mortgage. I'm liable for it. You're not. You can't deduct it. Okay. So again, it has to be the taxpayer's obligation. The taxpayer has to pay it. Not. Um, here's a comparison again. Business, straight up business versus investment. Um, activities both of them have to be for profit in other words it cannot be a hobby hobby expenses and no, there's really no deductible hobby loss but hobby expenses can only be deducted to the extent of any hobby income hobby income is reported directly on the 1040 form without any deductions and whatever deduction you do have for your hobby you can claim them as an itemized deduction, a miscellaneous itemized deduction, reduced by 2% of the AGI. Okay. So it's best if you do have lots of expenses to have your activity either a business or investment, more so a business, because now if you have losses, those losses are deductible. Hobby losses, not deductible. Um, and here is that uh, rental production of activity. Yeah? Generally, this is also deductible, even if it's a loss. But we'll see in a future chapter, there may be limitations to rental losses call, called passive loss activities. Here again, hobby losses are not deductible. And there's a presumption that your activity is not a hobby but a trade or business if you can show out of every five years uh, three of them are uh, profitable um, hobbies have maybe a recreational nature nature to them something like selling crafts jewelry raising race horses maybe yeah so it's more recreational and there's some hidden cost in there that has maybe a personal nature versus a business nature. Let's see, trade or business versus investment. Definitely, um, if you do have expenses, trade or business are better. Investment expenses, so let's say an investment loss. We've seen this before, back in the previous chapter, if we had a a um, capital loss but here we focus on this slide trade or business and it's an ordinary loss versus a capital loss it's a deduction for AGI 
I guess in a future chapter we'll talk about net operating losses. If you have almost like a negative AGI, we can actually carry back the business loss to a previous year and forward to future years. Um, we'll see in the depreciation chapter something called uh, Section 179 where we can deduct right away in the year we purchase a big asset versus depreciating it over a few years or the life of the asset. Investment expenses or losses. Typically when you sell an investment, hopefully you have a gain, but if you have a loss, it's going to be a capital loss. And like we've seen in previous chapters, capital losses are used to offset just capital gains. And then another 3,000 of the loss can be used to offset other income of the taxpayer. Any unused capital losses after that are carried over to next year. Again, hobby losses, not deductible. Here is um, fees incurred for legal and accounting costs. Well, maybe some of us are going to be accountants and we're going to be charging our taxpayer accounting fees. If it's for their trade or business, it should be all deductible by our client as a trade or business expense. But many times we're charging them to prepare tax returns and the tax returns may not have a business being reported or have a business and non-business activities. If the tax return has a Schedule C, that's trade or business, or a Schedule E, they say Part 1, that's the rental, but even Part 2 has partnership income, which could also be a trade or business, and a farm, Schedule F. If you charge fees to prepare this, you should be reporting the fee as a deduction on these uh, schedules, reducing the trade or business income. And any other part of your fee then is personal, reported as an itemized deduction on Schedule A. But then remember, I said you got to reduce it by 2% of your AGI, probably resulting in zero being deducted there. Likewise, the same thing with legal fees. If the legal fees are related to a trade or business operation, they should be deducted right away. If it's legal fees to acquire property, then we'll see in a, a future slide that that type of cost should be capitalized with the cost of that property and either deducted when the property is sold or depreciated over the life if you're using it within your business. Legal fees like um, attorney fees for, for divorce, for child custody, for other non-business activities usually is not deductible. Here again is our Schedule C, and then the deductions down here include legal and professional fees related to this business. Now, if it's personal, you probably can't deduct it here on this Schedule, on this schedule C. Schedule A, again down here, would be the tax preparation fee for non-business reduced by 2% of AGI, resulting in something small or zero over here. Cost is either going to be treated as an expense and deducted right away, or cost is going to be capitalized. That's just another term for treating it as an asset. Not deducted right away possibly going to be depreciated and turned into a depreciation expense over the life of this asset or whatever costs you do have here can be deducted the remaining costs remember adjusted basis from the previous chapter can be deducted at the time you sell it here it says certain costs must be capitalized examples would be any type of cost that is a major improvement or betterment or here it says uh, add value to the property. 
the the difficult ones is usually with real big costs related let's say to buildings so let's say that you have a building and then you need to repaint this building here the building is huge it'll cost tens hundreds of thousand dollars to 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 repaint this building how are you going to treat this painting cost is it an expense or do you have to add it to the cost of the building typically maintenance expense even though it's huge because the asset is huge typically is a deduction right away how about if we had to re-roof this building you're talking tens hundreds of thousands again maybe a million if it's a big building what do you think most times you have to treat this as a new asset maybe deduct the cost if you can find for the remaining basis of the build of the roof which is difficult to do and then capitalize the new roof cost and depreciate this as an asset and depreciate the building remaining basis as another asset some costs that can be deducted right away you can elect to treat it as a capitalized cost part of the asset cost now why would you do that don't you want to get a deduction right away most times you want to do that to reduce taxes right away but maybe your taxes are very low right now you know low tax bracket or no taxes a possible situation would be if you have real estate that's raw land that's not productive not even being rented out but you're incurring mortgage interest costs and real property taxes that cannot offset any revenue because you don't have any revenue for these operations well what you can do is add this cost into the cost of that property so now when you sell this property you have a bigger basis to subtract out in the year you sell this property probably you'll have high income a big profit hopefully right but now you get to reduce it by all of this postponed a capitalized cost you elected to treat as part of the cost here. So this slide is saying that any expenses that are incurred and related to income that is exempt or tax free, these expenses are not deductible. So the situation really illustrated here, if you remember back in the previous chapter I think it was three something called municipal bonds you have tax-free interest on this if you had to borrow money incur costs to buy these bonds that cost is uh, not deductible because the interest on these bonds are not taxable um, let me give you another example so here in Hawaii and maybe in Alaska federal civil service workers will probably possibly receive an additional income called cost of living allowance because the high cost of living here in Hawaii and Alaska as compared to I believe in Washington DC this COLA is tax-free income at least on the federal tax return Hawaii though says that we're going to tax you on this COLA income, just like a regular wage or salary. So you pay state income taxes on this COLA. Uh, income tax. And we know state income taxes are an itemized deduction. But now the federal government comes in and say, you know this state tax on the COLA, you can't deduct it because it's an expense related to tax exempt income so every year if you're a federal civil service employee receiving cola and you claim itemized deductions not the standard because you're deducting this on let's say your state income tax return we got to make an adjustment on your federal and what complicates things more is if you get a state refund possibly part of that state refund is non-taxable because you didn't get to deduct all of the state income taxes as an itemized deduction 
yeah complications for people living in Hawaii or Alaska federal workers federal civil service workers the municipal interest we've seen uh, I guess in our project was reported here and not added up with all the other income that's tax so again if you pay any costs on your municipal bonds earning this interest typically what you would uh, maybe see for taxpayers who borrow money sometimes they call that margin interest if they borrow through the broker that margin interest is non-deductible if the interest were deductible it would be an itemized deductions subtracted over here in this interest section let, let me zoom in here here's investment interest expense deduction calculated on this form here and then rewritten here but you cannot claim anything here if the interest you had paid was to buy those municipal uh, tax-free interest bonds let's stop here and when we come back go ahead and uh, take a look at the video for part two